So now I'm going to take a few minutes just to explain to you again what adjustment layers are and how they are used. And we talked about them back in the adjustment layer class. However, it's very important for you to understand how they interact. What we have here is a background, which is just the original image. Okay, it just came out of the camera and I dropped it in here and now we're going to start working on it. So at this point, an adjustment layer is nothing more than tinted glass and it's going to give the image either a tint of color or it's going to adjust the tonal range somehow, some way. It's going to do something. So with that said, when we look at this image, what's one of the first things that you see that this image needs? To me, it needs some saturation. Okay, so if I click on the saturation tool, which is this one right here, it's going to add a saturation layer as well as open up the properties palette, which has the saturation adjustment within it. So I'm going to click on saturation and slide it this way. And now we have saturation. Uh, so what else can this image use? I think it should have a little bit of tone uh, put into it. So I'm going to click on curves. And we'll talk about curves in detail later. But basically, I'm going to darken this image because I don't need to see this detail in the front of it. So if I just take that and bring that down, we're just going to darken that a little bit. Now it looks a little too dark, right? Because it's too dark. So now I'm going to pull this side up. And we're going to add a little bit light to the sky. All right. So that was before. And here's after. We're giving a little bit of drama to the image. Okay? Looking good. Okay, so now here's just an example of two changes. We have a saturation and we have a tonal change where we're adding the contrast into the image. We could potentially maybe do selective color, for example. With selective color, this allows me to grab very specific colors without the need to create a mask. So in this case, I'm looking at all these yellows. So I'm going to click on the pull down and select yellows. And again, we'll be talking about all these tools in detail in subsequent videos. I'm just giving you an introduction at this point. So I'm going to click the yellow color, and I'm going to add magenta to it. So you see that? Okay. So when I hide all these layers, we go back to the original image. The first thing I did was I added hue saturation. Then I added contrast, and then I grabbed the yellows and made them red. Simply an example of what could be done by using a couple adjustment layers, which are nothing more than tinted glass that are layered on top of each other. Now, because they are layered on top of each other and they are going to affect everything below it, it's important to understand the layering within an image. The ordering of layers matters. So if we were to rearrange these, we may or may not see a different result. And from my own experimentation here, if I put the selective color underneath curves, it looks the same. If I put the hue saturation on top, it looks the same. So now this is what you might think is going to happen all the time, but this is just more of an anomaly than anything else. So I'm going to hit uh, levels, and I'm going to change my levels quite drastically here to make a point. Okay, Right now, the levels are on top, but if I put the levels down below, you can see we get a very different look to the image. Okay, Again, just an example, but the point here is that the levels, depending on where they are placed within the order of the other layers is going to matter how it affects the end result that it looks to us. So ultimately, layering matters because you're going to get a different result depending on which order the different layers are put into. And because of that, I will often take this entire group that I would consider an overall change because it's just the entire image. It is an overall change. I'll take that entire group and I'll put them into a folder so that I don't accidentally touch them again. Okay? I don't want to accidentally um, swipe the mouse and move one above the other and change the look of the image, and I didn't even realize it until it was too late or after the fact or whatever. And because I'm doing cloning and things, icky things can happen. So I want to avoid that is essentially what it is. 
So anyway, this is just a brief introduction to show you what adjustment layers were and how they interact with each other and that they're just tinted glass that adjust the layer below it. So making a tonal change on top of a color change can very well be different by having a color change going down to a tonal change or vice versa. Let's get started on talking about the actual tools themselves and showing you how the different tools work and what they are actually used for.